Continuing on with uh, John Redden's book, Elementary Algebra, let's look at the next section, which is, um, we're still in chapter one, real numbers and their operations, and then this is section four, fractions. We're going to learn how to reduce a fraction to lowest terms, how to multiply and divide fractions, how to add fractions and subtract fractions. Okay, so st let's start with reducing. A fraction is a real number written as a quotient. And a quotient is a ratio of two integers, a over b, a and b being the integers, and b can't be zero, right? Because you can't have zero in a denominator uh, of a fraction. You can't divide something divided by zero uh, because that's undefined, as we learned in the last section. So the top of the fraction is called the numerator, the bottom is called the denominator, and it the top doesn't necessarily have to just be an integer, it can be a whole bunch of things. And all those things together are the numerator. Uh, similarly, the denominator can be a whole bunch of things, and all those things considered as a group are the denominator. So the integer above the fraction bar is called the numerator, and the integer below is the denominator. Uh, here, this is kind of simplified where it's just talking about integers. But like I just said, that's not necessarily the case. You can have much more complicated numerators and much more complicated denominators than that. So, but in this case, let's just consider one integer over another. The numerator is called the part and the denominator is called the whole. Equivalent fractions are two equal ratios expressing you, expressed using different numerators and denominators. So what does equivalent fraction mean? Well, it means if you have a pizza with 100 pieces, that's kind of a huge pizza, but anyway, let's say you have a huge pizza. It's got 100 pieces in it, and you eat 50 of those pieces. You've eaten half of the pizza, right? So the fraction 50 over 100 is the same as 1 half. These are equivalent fractions. 50 parts out of 100 is the same ratio as 1 part out of 2 and represents this the same real number. So let's consider the following factorizations of 50 and 100. If we're going to start dividing these up. We're, we're not going to divide them all, uh, divide these into all their prime numbers. We're looking for what we're going to call a common factor. So let's just take the number 50 and recognize that it can be factored into 2 times 25. 100 can be factored into 4 times 25. So this 25 is common. It's a common factor, right? So it's because both of these numbers share the factor 25. So we can rewrite the ratio 50 over 100 as 2 times 25 over 4 times 25. Now remember I was saying that a numerator doesn't necessarily just mean an, uh, an integer one integer and the denominator just w one integer like they've talked about here uh, above but here as you can see if you just forget about this this left side of the equation let's say you were just given this you can see that the numerator is not written as one integer the denominator is not written as one integer it's the numerator is written in this case as a product of a couple of integers and the denominator is written as a product of a couple of integers so anyway but that's neither here nor there i'm going to stop talking about that okay so anyway getting back to this we realize the multiplicative identity property uh leads us to believe that or leads us to know that 25 over 25 is one right any number divided by itself is equal to 1. So what you can do is just cancel the 25s. And you get in, and you end up with 2 divided by 4. And times 1. Okay? Because you split this up. Uh, 20, you have 2 over 4 times 25 over 25, which is 1. And 2 over 4 times 1 is just going to be 2 over 4. Because anything times 1 is that same thing. So when you divide 25 by 25 and replace the factor with a 1, it's called canceling. Like I was saying here, we cross it out, we're canceling a factor. So these basic steps help you find equivalent fractions. In this case, 
we call it reducing, okay? Why have something complicated like 50 over 100, not that it's complicated, but these are, you know, big numbers, when you can identify it more simply by saying 2 over 4, or actually 1 over 2, as we saw above. So, why do people need to know that you ate 50 pieces of pizza out of 100 when they can just know that you ate half the pizza, right? Um, now, let's see here. Uh, okay. What if you have, uh, what if you're trying to find equivalent fractions where the numerator and denominator have no common factor other than one? That's called reducing to lowest terms. So why don't we break this up a little further and look at primes, okay? 50, when you look at 50 in terms of primes, remember up here, we just expressed it as 2 times 25. Well, 25 is not a prime number. 2 is a prime number. 25 isn't. 25 is 5 times 5. Those are both prime numbers. And in the denominator here, 4 is not a prime number. It's equal to 2 times 2, which are prime numbers. And 25, again, is equal to 5 times 5, which are prime numbers. So let's just show all of these prime numbers here. 50 over 100 equals 2 times 5 times 5. Remember, 2 times 25 equals 2 times 5 times 5. And in the denominator, we had 4 times 25, right? So that's equal to 2 times 2, which is 4, times 5 times 5, which is 25. 4 times 25, okay? So that's where this came from. 2 times 25 uh, got broken down into these prime factors, 5 and 5. 4 times 25 got broken down into these prime factors, 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. What can we cancel? Well, one of these twos in the denominator can be canceled because we have one, two, we have a two in the numerator. So if we have a two in the numerator and a two in the denominator, we can cancel those. Note that we have to keep the other two though, because we only have one, we, we just have a single two in the numerator where we have a pair of twos in the denominator. So we can cancel one of those though. And then we have a couple fives up here and a couple fives down here, so we can cancel all those. And so here you're left with one because it's one times all this other stuff, right? You have to have something in the numerator and that's gonna be a one because all of this being multiplied by one is the same as all of this, right? So you end up with a half. And we get the same result by dividing the numerator and the denominator by the greatest common factor the GCF. That's the biggest number that divides both numerator and denominator evenly. One way to find the GCF of 50 100, and 100 is to list all the factors of each identity of, I'm sorry, uh, list all the factors of each and uh, each number, uh, meaning all the factors of 50, all the factors of 100, and then identify the largest number that appears in both lists. And remember each number is also a factor of itself. So, 50 is a factor of 50, 100 is a factor of 100, 1 is always a factor of everything. So, in this case, 50 is equal to 1 times 50, or 2 times 25, or 5 times 10. So, those are all, all, all possibilities. Similarly, 100 is equal to 1 times 100, or 2 times 50, or 4 times 25, or uh, 5 times 20 or 10 times 10, and we only show 10 in here once because 10 and 10 are the same factor, right? So what's the biggest number that's common to both of these lists? Well, you'll notice that 50 is the biggest number common to both of these lists. You have some other numbers common, 1, 2, 5, 10, 25, and 50. Basically, all the factors of 50 are also factors of 100, okay? But not all the factors of 100 are factors of 50. So the biggest number here is 50, that, the biggest number that matches, essentially, that's in both lists is, is 50. So that's the GCF. And this just explains the common factors are in bold, and the GCF is 50. And we use this notation to indicate what we've just done. 
we are looking for the GCF of 50 and 100, and that's 50. So after determining the GCF, we reduce by dividing both the numerator and the denominator as follows. You're just going to divide them both by the GCF. So you're going to divide 50 by the GCF, which is 50 or divided by 50, which is 1, or 100 divided by the GCF. And I'm sorry, not or 100. In the denominator, you have 100 divided by the GCF, which is 100 divided by 50, which is 2. Okay, so let's look at another example. 105 divided by 300. Let's break it up into primes first, and then we'll cancel. So, um, 105, you may recognize 5 times 21 is 105. So, 5 is a prime number, okay? And what's 21? It's equal to the prime numbers 3 and 7. So, 3 times 7 is 21, times 5 is 105. So, let's order them from smallest to biggest. 3 times 5 times 7. In the numerator, you know you know the 3 is a prime number, so why don't we just take the 3 out right away. 3 times 100 is 300. And what's 100 except for 10 times 10, right? And each of those 10s is comprised of the prime numbers 2 times 5. 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 3 is 300. So order from smallest to largest, you have 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. What can we cancel? We've got a 3 here and a 3 here. We've got a 5 here and a 5 here. We can cancel all those. We're left with 7 in, in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have 2 times 2 times 5. Okay, so 7 over 2 times 2 times 5. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So we end up with 7 over 20. Now, we could have gotten the same result if we divided the numerator and denominator by the GCF. So what's a quick way to find the GCF of the two numbers? Well, we had just split them up into primes, and the ones, the, the primes that we canceled, when you multiply those together, that's actually the GCF, okay? So what did we cancel? We canceled 3 and 5. 3 times 5 is 15, okay? So 15 is the GCF. As we indicate here, the GCF, of uh, this number and that number is equal to 3 times 5, which is 15. Similarly, if we'd been up here, instead of looking through this list for the GCF, we could have just looked at what we'd cancelled. We cancelled 2 times 5 times 5, and 2 times 5 times 5, and 2 times 5 times 5 is 2 times 25, which is 50. And remember, that was the GCF up there. So, um... What it, what, how would it have worked if we had just divided by the numerator by the GCF and the denominator by the GCF? 105 divided by 15 equals 7. 300 divided by 15 equals 20. So, same answer, 7 over 20. All right, let's try this one. We'll have to do it in our heads. This is one of those ones where you have a video answer. They don't show the work. So, 32 over 96. What's 32? Well, it ends with a 2, so we can take a 2 out, right? 2 times 16 is 32. Well, what's 16? We know 16 is 4 times 4, and each of those 4s is 2 times 2. So we ended up with the 2 we first took out, times 4 times 4, right? Because we had 2 times 16, that's equal to 2 times 4 times 4. And each of those 4s is, is 2 2s, so we end up with the 2 at the beginning, 2 2s in the middle, two twos at the end, so we have two times two times two times two times two. Okay, there's five twos being multiplied with each other. What's going on in the denominator? We have 96. Can we divide that by two? Yes, we can. We would have 48, which we can also divide by two to end up with 24. And so now you have 2 times 2 times 24, right? Well, 24 is 4 times 6. And the 4 in that is 2 times 2, and the 6 in that is 2 times 3. So you have the, the two 2's at the beginning. To get to 24, you divided 96 by 2, and then you divided 48 by 2, and you got to 24. So you had the 2 times 2, and then within the, 40, uh, within the 24, you had 4 times 6, and that was equal to a 2 times 2 and a 2 times 3. 
So you got the two twos at the beginning, two twos in the middle, and at the end you have two and three. So the two twos in the in the beginning and the two twos in the middle and the two before the three, that those are five twos there. So you have five twos times three. And in the numerator you had five twos. So what's the GCF going to be? Well, you can cancel the five twos in the numerator with the five twos in the denominator. And you're just going to be left with the three in the denominator. And the numerator, you're just going to have one. Because one multiplied by all that other stuff that's can been canceled leaves just one in the end. So you're going to have one divided by three, which is a third. That's the answer. Okay. Now, another thing you could have done is everything you canceled, remember, that stuff multiplied together is the GCF. So you had five of those twos in the numerator, which was equal to 32. Those all got canceled. So what's what's the GCF? Well, it's just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. It's the 2 to the power 5. We'll talk about powers later, but it's, it's five factors that are all equal to 2, and we already know that multiplied together, they're equal to 32. So we know what the GCF is. The GCF is 32. The other way to get to the answer would be to divide the numerator by the GCF, and that's 32 divided by 32, which is 1. And then you divide the denominator by the GCF, 96 divided by 32, which is 3, as it turns out. 3 times 32 is 96, so 96 divided by 32 is 3. So that's another way to get to 1 over 3, 1 third. And you can watch the video if you want. What's an improper fraction? It's when the numerator is bigger than the denominator. And a mixed number is a number that represents the sum of the whole number and the fraction. So 5 and a half is a mixed number that represents 5 plus a half. Okay. Um, we're going to use long division to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number. And the remainder is a numerator of the fractional part. So what does all this mean? <laughs> I'll show you here and it'll make a lot more sense. So 23 over 5 is this improper fraction because 23 is a bigger number than 5. And with the numerator bigger than the denominator, we call that an improper fraction. It's basically a fraction that's equal to more than 1. Okay, so if we're talking about pizzas, this means that there's more than one pizza involved. Whereas a usual proper fraction, you might say, which has a smaller numerator than denominator, that means we're talking about par part of one pizza rather than more than one pizza. Okay, so notice that 5 divides into 23 four times with a remainder of 3. You know how to do this. Uh, you got the 4 multiplied by the 5, it's 20. 23 minus 20 is 3. 3 is your remainder. So, you have 4 plus 3 over 5, right? Because the denominator is the same. So you have 4 pizzas plus 3 fifths of a pizza. 4 and 3 fifths pizzas. Um, and like I just said, the denominator of the mixed number remains the same as the denominator of the original fraction. To convert mixed numbers to improper fractions, so going the other way, we need to multiply the whole number by the denominator and then add the numerator, which results over the original denominator. So, um, with the result over the original denominator. So, what does that mean? It sounds like a bunch of gibberish, but basically it's pretty easy when you look at the, um, when you look at the math involved. 3 and 5 sevenths, we want to write that as an improper fraction. So what what does this mean? It means we have more than one pizza. We have three pizzas, three full pizzas, plus we have five sevenths of a pizza, which means each, each pizza has seven slices in it, okay? And so we have five of those slices left for this, this one. So these pizzas, they all have seven slices in them, right? So... If you have three full pizzas, each of them with seven slices, let's just talk about how many slices you have. You have 21 slices, right? Seven slices per pizza times three pizzas is 21 slices. So another way of writing three and five sevenths 
is to write 7 times 3 in the numerator as the number of slices per pizza times the number of pizzas. That's the 21 slices that you have in these three pizzas. Those 21 slices in those three full pizzas plus the five slices from this part of a pizza and you end up with 7 times 3 plus 5. And you divide that by 7, of course. The denominator stays the same. That's just how many slices you have in each pizza. So, how many slices do you have in total? 21, which is 7 times 3, plus 5. So that's 26 slices. And 7 is still how many slices per pizza you have. So that's the answer, 26 over 7. So, note that when you're converting from a mixed number, or to a mixed number, sorry, it's not part of the reducing process. We consider improper fractions, such as 26 over 7, to be reduced to lowest terms. In algebra, it's often preferable to work with improper fractions, although in some applications, mixed numbers are more appropriate. Some apps, you might say. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, you find out about that when you've practiced a little bit. Um, it's basically, what they're saying is we don't like these mixed numbers as much these mixed uh, these mixed numbers as much as we like the improper fractions because we can do more when it's written like this than if it's written like that. So ten and a half pizzas means that each pizza just has two slices in it. So these ten pizzas have twenty slices in them total, right? Ten times two. Plus you got one slice in this pizza. So you get 20 slices here, plus 1 slice from there. You get the total of 20 plus 1, which is 21 slices, and divided by how many slices per pizza you have, which is 2. So the answer is 21 over 2. There's a video if you want to watch it. Okay, now what about when we're multiplying and dividing fractions? Assume that A, B, C, and D are all the non-zero integers. Okay, as it turns out, we only want to make sure the denominators are are non-zero because we can't have a zero anywhere in a denominator of a fraction. A and C, in this case, we leave them non-zero so that we can we don't have a situation where zero, it's just zero times something because that'll just make zero, and then your result will be a numerator with a zero and, and a numerator being zero, and then basically you'll have nothing. So. Anyway, let's just assume that all four of these integers are non-zero. They're not equal to zero. So the product of two fractions is formed by the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators. So a over b times c over d is equal to a times c over b times d. So multiplying two, two thirds times five sevenths, you're just going to multiply the numerators two times five and you're going to put that over the, the, the product of the denominators, which is 3 times 7, so you're going to put 10, 3 times 5 is 10, divided by 3 times 7, which is 21, so your answer is 10 firsts, or just 10 over 21. All right, now remember what we talked about earlier uh, about how a product of a positive number and a negative number is a negative number. So here we have a positive fraction and a negative fraction. You can have negative fractions, okay, because we're not always talking about pizzas. Uh, pizzas or, you know, pieces of pizza are always going to be positive, but you could have negative fractions too, right? Just like you can have uh, a number line going from 0 to negative 1 to negative 2 to negative 3. Before you, well, you're on the number line going from 0 to negative 1, you're going to pass by negative one-fourth on the way, right? So that's a real number. All right, so negative one-fourth times five-ninths, or five-ninths times negative one-fourth. We can consider it either way. What happens is the negative, you take the negative and multiply everything in the numerator by that negative. In this case, everything in the numerator is just a one. So a one times a negative is just a negative one, okay? Another way to do it is just to leave the negative sign on the outside like they've done here, okay? But 
I find it a bit easier to think of negative 1 being the numerator, so it's negative 1 divided by 4. And if you think about it on a number line, if you're going from 0 to negative 1, you're 1 fourth of the way there when you get to negative 1 fourth, right? So that's basically negative 1 divided by 4. It's 1 fourth of the way to negative 1. So it's the mark is negative 1 fourth, okay? Which is negative 1 divided by 4, which is what this is saying. Negative 1 divided by 4 is negative 1 fourth. All right, but they want to put the negative on the outside, so uh, we'll just leave it on the outside, and we'll just multiply 5 times 1 in the numerator, and 9 times 4 in the denominator. And basically, we would have had the same result. If we left this at, at negative 1, we would have had negative 5 in the denominator, which is equal to a negative times a 5, which is the way that they're doing it here. They've got a negative times everything in the numerator, which is 5, which is negative 5, okay? In the denominator, 9 times 4, they're both positive numbers. You end up with a positive number, 36, so your answer is negative 5. 36, or negative 5, uh, negative 5 over 36. Okay, so let's try multiplying improper fraction by a mixed number. So this illustrates what we touched on earlier, which is that we don't like mixed numbers as much as we like improper fractions because we can do more with improper fractions. So let's get rid of this mixed number and we'll make it an imp improper fraction. Um, you have 5 and 3 fourths. It's a positive number, so let's think in terms of pizzas here. 5 full pizzas and 3 fourths of a pizza. So each pizza has 4 slices in it. The 5 full pizzas have how many slices? Well, each of them has 4, so it's 5 times 4, which is 20. Plus of 3 slices over here, 23 slices divided by 4 slices per pizza. Okay, so 23 over 4. We still have the 2 thirds to multiply it by, so that's still here. We'll just multiply the numerators and put that over the products of the denominators. So 2 times 23 over 3 times 4. Well, 4 is just 2 times 2, right? So you could say 2 times 23 over 3 times 2 times 2. Now you have a common factor. You have a couple 2's in the denominator and a single 2 in the numerator. So why don't we cancel that single 2 in the numerator with one of the 2's down here, and we'll just end up with the other 2 down here in the denominator. So in the numerator, we'll just have 1 times 23, and in the denominator, we'll just have 3 times 2. So that gives us 1 times 23 is 23. 3 times 2 is 6. 23 over 6. Okay, but now they want us to put it back in terms of a mixed number, which we don't necessarily have to do. I would take, I would accept this as a, as a correct answer, unless this question specifically stated that the answer must be as a mixed number. But that's fine. Let's convert it back to a mixed number. So... 23 over 6 is a positive number, so we can talk about pizzas. Each pizza has 6 slices in it, and we have 23 slices. So we can use long division and realize that we can get um, 18 over 6, and we'll have 5 slices left over. So 18 over 6 is 3 full pizzas, plus 5 slices left over, so that's 5 six of a pizza. In this example, we notice we could reduce before we multiply the numerators and denominators. Reducing in this way is called cross-canceling and saves us time when we're multiplying fractions. Okay, so that's what we did. Uh, sorry, right here. When I was mentioning that 4 is just 2 times 2, and we canceled one of those 2s with the 2 in the top. So two real numbers whose product is 1 are called reciprocals. Okay, so... A over B and B over A are reciprocals because we multiply these and you get AB over AB. B times A is just BA or AB, same thing. B times A is the same as A over B. So you have A over B over A over... A over sorry. B times A is the same as A times B. Okay, so you can have A times B up here and A times B down here. 
those just all cancel out and you get one that's a just a definition of what a reciprocal is so um, two-thirds over three halves and you'll notice that this is just like an A over B and this is just like a B over A because A is 2 here and B is 3 there uh, and then B is 3 A is 2 okay so it's just equal to 6 over 6 which is 1 or you notice you could you can just cancel everything you can cancel this 3 with this 3 you can cancel this 2 with this 2 so all you have up here is 1 and all you have down here is 1 and 1 divided by 1 is just 1 so because the product is 1, 2 thirds and 3 halves are reciprocal. Some other reciprocals are shown here. 5 eighths and 8 fifths. Okay. What about 7? Seven? 7 is equal to one o or 7 over 1, right? Because you can write any integer as a fraction. Just put that integer over 1. And that's how you write it as a fraction. So 7 is just the same as 7 over 1. The reciprocal of that is going to be 1 over 7. Okay, you can have reciprocals with negative numbers too. Negative four fifths is the same is a reciprocal of negative five fourths. Okay, uh, what I was talking about a bit earlier was you could have negative four over five, and the reciprocal of that would be five over negative four, and five over negative four, as it turns out, is the same as negative five over four, which is negative five fourths. Okay. Um, this definition is important because dividing fractions requires you to multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. Okay, that's a bunch of words, but uh, it might be a little confusing, but let's just see what that means here. Dividing fractions requires you multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. Okay, so here, we're multiplying a dividend, A over B, by the reciprocal of the divisor. The divisor is 7, or er, C, sorry, 7. I was thinking about the number 7, because I like that number. Okay, anyway, um, the divisor here is what you're dividing by, right? The, di the dividend is what you're dividing. The divisor is what you're dividing it by. You take the reciprocal of that divisor, C over D, the reciprocal is D over C, and so you can multiply it then, instead of having to divide it, and it's easier to multiply things than to divide them, so A over B times D over C equals the numerators multiplied together over the denominators multiplied together, which is AD a over BC. So dividing two-thirds divided by five-sevenths is going to be the same as taking two-thirds and multiplying it by the reciprocal of five-sevenths, which is seven-fifths. And that's what we see here, two-thirds times seven-fifths. Multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together, you end up with two times seven over three over five, that's fourteen, that's fifteen, so the answer is fourteen over fifteen. And remember we talked about earlier about how a slash is just another way to write a division sign. So 5 over 1 half is the same as 5 times the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2 over 1. Okay. Which is the same as 5 over 1, because you can write 5 as a fraction. We're just we're putting it over 1. You can put any integer over 1 to write it as a fraction. So 5 over 1 times 2 over 1. The numerators multiplied are 10. The denominators might have multiplied are 1. You get 10 over 1, that's 10. Okay. You could also take, let's see here, this is not really clear, but what if it says is 7 eighths divided by 2 thirds? Okay. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this denominator instead, the divisor, right? We've got to take its reciprocal to multiply it by the dividend. So the dividend is still 7 eighths, but the divisor is reciprocal. Instead of two-thirds, it's going to be three-halves. We're going to multiply that. So, seven-eighths times three-halves. Seven times three is twenty-one. Eight times two is sixteen. We get twenty-one over sixteen. This is a complex fraction. A fraction whose numerator and denominator are both fractions. Okay? So, if you have one fraction over another fraction, complex fraction. Now, 
why is dividing equal equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor? Well, if you want to know the answer, remember that the product of reciprocals is 1. So we're going to apply the multiplicative identity property and multiply the numerator and the denominator by the reciprocal of the denominator to get the following. 7 eighths over th 2 thirds. We're going to multiply that by 1, which is shouldn't change anything, right? If you multiply something by 1, it doesn't change anything. So you can say that this is the same as that same thing times 1. But how can we write 1? Well, we can write 1 as 3 halves over 3 halves. Why are we writing it like that? Because 3 halves is the reciprocal of the divisor, okay? And we want to show why our result is going to be related to this dividend being multiplied by the reciprocal of the divisor. And that's what we created here. This numerator is what we're looking for. In, not this numerator, but this, this, um, this product of these uh, two fractions that we see in these numerators, uh, the product of this numerator with this numerator is what we want in our answer. Okay, so that's why we chose to use three halves over three halves. That might take a little while for you to figure it out. It's not crucial, but uh, you can think about it and, and then you'll, you'll get it eventually. Basically here what you see is this, which is what we're looking for in the product, over this, two-thirds over three-halves, where everything cancels. Two and two cancel, three and three cancel, we end up with just one, okay? Because we end up with one over one, which is one. And if you take anything and divide it by one, you end up with that same thing. So that's how we ended up with just the dividend that we started with, multiplied by just the reciprocal of the divisor. Okay, so that's the the proof of uh, what the the origin, I guess, of our technique. Not so much the proof, but you could call this a proof. A proof is just when you're proving something using math. To, you know, prove prove that this is this. You prove it by showing, you know, a bit of detail. Uh, all right, I'm rambling a bit. Sorry about that. Okay, so before we multiply, we're going to look for common factors to cancel, of course, because then we don't have to reduce as much at the end. So let's say we have 5 halves divided by 7 fourths. So that's the same as 5 halves times 4 sevenths, right? The reciprocal of the divisor. 5 halves divided by 7 fourths is equal to 5 halves times 4 sevenths. What can we cancel here? Well, we got 4 that's equal to a product of two prime numbers, both of those being 2, or is 2 times 2. We've got a couple 2's in the numerator, we've got a single 2 in the denominator, we can cancel uh, the single 2 down here with one of the 2's up here, so we'll end up with just the other 2 up here, 5 times 2 is 10, down here you just get 1, 1 times 7 is 7, 10 7 is the answer. Okay, when dividing by an integer, remember to rewrite it as a fraction over 1. Okay, because we want to deal with just fractions. Two-thirds divided by six. Well, let's say that six is six over one. Okay, because then we can find its reciprocal a lot easier. So what's the reciprocal of six over one? Well, it's going to be one over six. So instead of having to divide, we can multiply by the reciprocal. We can do two-thirds, which is what we had at the beginning here times one-sixth. What can we cancel? Well, six is not a prime number. It's equal to two times three. And we have a two up here. So let's cancel the two down there with the two up there. And we'll just have the three instead of the six. And we also have this other three. Up here, we'll just have a one. So we'll have one times one over three times three, which is one over nine, one nine. Also note, we only cancel when working with multiplication. Rewrite any division problem as a product before canceling. Here's one of those ones where we have to do it in our heads. 
5 divided by 2 and 3 fifths. Okay. Let's just get everything into fractions. 5 is 5 over 1. 2 and 3 fifths, so let's get that into an improper fraction. You got two full pizzas, it's a positive number, so let's think in terms of pizzas. Two full pizzas, each with 10 slices. I'm sorry, each with five slices. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Is 10 slices, plus you got the three slices from this pizza, so that's 13 pieces over five slices per pizza. So you have five over one divided by 13 over five. And you can take the reciprocal of this divisor. Instead of 13 over five, let's use five over 13. And we'll multiply it by five. So we're going to have 5 over 1 times 5 over 13. And as it turns out, those are all prime numbers, so we can't reduce anything. So 5 times 5 is 25. 1 times 13 is 13. So we're going to end up with 25 over 13, which is an improper fraction. These guys want the result as a mixed number. So 25 over 13, it's a positive number, so we'll go back to the pizzas. Each pizza has 13 slices in it. We've got 25 slices, so that means we have a full pizza with 13 slices, plus we have another 12 slices left over. So we have 1 and 12 thirteenths, right? Because we have 25 slices, 13 over here and 12 over here. Okay, so what about when we're adding and subtracting fractions? Adding and subtracting fractions. Negative fractions are indicated with a negative sign in front of the fraction bar, or in the numerator, or in the denominator. So as I touched on earlier, you could have negative uh, 3 divided by 4, or you could have negative 3 fourths, or you could have 3 divided by negative 4. Actually, that last part I didn't mention. I don't think. Maybe I did. All such forms are equivalent and interchangeable. So what does this mean? It means if you're at the number line, let's say your number line's over here, zero's in the middle, and you're going towards negative three, so you pass negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, now if you only went a fourth of the way to negative three, you'd be at negative three fourths, right? So that's basically saying negative three divided by four, because it's a fourth of negative three, which means it's divided by four, is negative three-fourths. So that shows that negative three over four is equal to negative three-fourths. Now what about three over negative four? This one's a little bit harder to um, explain. If you, ha if you have positive three on this side, remember that positive three divided by four is positive three-fourths. And now you're looking for the opposite of that, if you have 3 divided by negative 4 equals something, then that something times negative 4 equals positive 3. That something must be a negative number. A negative number multiplied by the negative 4 can equal a positive number, positive 3. So what is that negative number? Well, it's negative 3 fourths. It's the mirror opposite of positive 3 fourths. So instead of saying 3 divided by 4, uh, just imagine there's a number line here, and you're at the 3 mark, and divide, and you, but you want to go a fourth of the way there. That's 3 over 4, right? So that's 3 fourths, if 0 is over here. Instead of 3 over 4, 3 over negative 4 puts you at the same position on the other side of the 0, negative 3 fourths. Okay, a little bit more abstract there, but you'll get it. Adding or subtracting fractions requires a common denominator. So here we'll assume that the common denominator is a non-zero integer because we don't want to ever have fractions over zero. They're undefined. So a over c plus b over c we can add because they both have the same denominator, c, right? If you have a pizza that has c slices per pizza, okay, let's say c is 8, so there's 8 slices per pizza, and this pizza only has a number of slices on it left. That pizza, that what fraction of a pizza is that? It's a over c, or eight in our case. Then you have another pizza that has the same number of pieces for pizza, and it has this number of pieces left, b. 
So you can just add the number of pieces of pizza A and B and divide that by 8 to give you the fraction of a pizza that you have in total. Same when you're dividing A over C minus B over C, you can just subtract. Okay, same logic as over here, just going in the opposite direction. If you think about um, this and this adding up to this, you can think about A plus B over C minus this is equal to this, right? That's just the opposite of addition. So A plus B over C minus B over C, well, the plus B and the minus B cancel out, because if you add a B and you subtract a B, you haven't really done anything. So you're just left with A, A over C, which is what we see over here. Same logic, A over C minus B over C, you're just subtracting the numerator. So A minus B over C. It's good practice to use positive common denominators by expressing negative fractions with negative numerators. So avoid negative denominators, okay? What does that mean? If you have a negative fraction, it's better to just throw that negative sign in the numerator. We don't want to have negative signs in the denominator. Even though we said up here that it's equivalent, negative 3 over 4 is the same as 3 over negative 4, but we rather not have the negative signs in the denominator if we can avoid it, which we usually can. So 12 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths, you can just subtract the numerators. So we just subtract the numerators, 12 minus 3 is 9, 9 fifteenths. 9 is equal to 3 times 3, those are prime numbers. 15 is equal to 3 times 5, those are prime numbers. So you have a 3, you have a couple 3's up here, and you have a single 3 down here, and so you can cancel one of the threes up here with the three down here. So you divide by the GCF. Uh, up here, nine divided by three is three. Down here, 15 divided by three is five. Most problems you'll see have unlike denominators. First, you find equivalent fractions with the common denominator before adding or subtracting the numerators. So one way to do that is divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. So, well, let's look at a technique for finding equivalent fractions by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Note that 5 over 5 equals 1, and 1 times any number is that number. You have a half. What's a half equal to? Well, it's equal to a half times 1, if you want. Any number times 1 is equal to that number. 1, if we want to say that it's equal to 5 over 5, we can say that. So, a half times 5 over 5 equals 5 over 10. We have equivalent fractions, a half equals 5 tenths. You want to use this idea to find equivalent fractions with a common denominator to add or subtract fractions. The steps are outlined here. Okay, so you have 7 fifteenths minus 3 tenths. Now, what's going to be a least common multiple, LCM, of the given denominators? You got 15 and you got 10. Well, let's look at primes. 15 is 3 times 5. 10 is 2 times 5. So they have a 5 in common. But this one has a 3 and this one has a 2. Those are not in common. So we'd have to multiply this by 2 or this by 3 in order to get uh, an LCM. 15 multiplied by that 2 that it's missing. 15 times 2 is 30. 10 missing that 3, so we can multiply that by 3, 10 times 3 is 30, okay? So your LCM here is 30. Another way to do it is if you look at multiples of 10, pretty much any integer with a 0 at the end is a multiple of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, okay? Like if you have $10 bills and you throw them on the table, how are you going to count them like this? There's no such thing as a $15 bill, but let's say there was. Say so you have $15 bills and you're throwing them on the table. And you have 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, and so on. What is the smallest multiple, the least, meaning the smallest one, that's common to these two numbers, 10 and 15? 30 is common, 60 is common. What's the least? 30, the smallest one. So LCM of 15 and 10 noted this way, is 30. Okay, what we're going to do now is multiply the numerator and the denominator of each fraction by values that result in equivalent fractions with the determined common denominator. Okay, so 
what does this mean? It means that we want to change this fraction and change this fraction so that it, it's expressed with 30s in the denominators instead of a 15 and a 10 because once it has 30s then we can add or subtract or whatever we're asked to do here at subtraction it could have been an addition as well it would have been the same process remember that what the 15 was missing 15 is 3 times 5 what it, what it was missing from here this is a 2 times 5 it doesn't have a 2 in here as a factor the 10 doesn't have a 3 as a factor so we multiply this by 2 and we multiply this by 3 and if in a fraction you're multiplying the denominator by something you have to multiply the numerator by the same thing in order to keep it the same in other words this fraction needs to be multiplied by 2 over 2 which is 1 and this fraction similarly needs to be multiplied by 3 over 3 which is 1 so if we multiply this fraction by 2 over 2 we're not changing it and if we multiply this fraction by 3 over 3 we're not changing its value we're just expressing it a bit differently so 7 over 15 times 2 over 2 is 14 over 30 and 3 times 3 over 10 over 3 is 9 over 30 and now we can just subtract the numerators 14 minus 9 is 5 5 over 30 but we can reduce that a bit 5 over 30 is 5 the 5 is a prime number 30 is not what's a 30 equal to well we just talked about what 30 would be equal to right when I was showing how we got to 30 we had a 3 times 5 times a 2 or over here we had a 2 times 5 times a 3 okay so those are the prime numbers that comprise 30 one of those numbers is 5 the numerator is also 5 so let's just divide the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 5 in order to reduce this we'll end up with just 1 in the numerator and we'll have 6 in the denominator so the answer is 1 6 the least common multiple of the denominators is called the least common denominator okay so instead of saying LCM what we usually say is LCD and this is often the hard part so it's worth finding this because if any common multiple other than the least is used there will be more steps involved in reducing right that's why we didn't want to use 60 up here because once we start multiplying in order to get to 60 in order to get 15 to 60 we'd have to multiply by uh, we'd have to have 4 over 4 here to get 10 to 60 we'd have to have 6 over 6 here and so you'd have 7 times 4 which is 28 and you'd have 3 times 6 which is 18 so you'd have 28 minus 18 over 60 uh, you'd end up with 10 over 60 now we, we know that 10 over 60 is 1 6 that's pretty easy you just drop the zeros but usually we don't want to end up with bigger numbers like that so that's why we like to have the LCD I shouldn't say usually pretty much always we don't want to have bigger numbers um, so here we have 5 tenths plus 1 18 um, how would we find the common the least common denominator or least common multiple as they've, as they've said here well I'm gonna say use the primes okay you've got 10 which is 2 times 5 and here you've got 2 times 9 2 times 9 is 2 times 3 times 3 because 9 is 3 times 3 okay so what are your prime factors you have 2 times 5 here you have 2 times 3 times 3 here the 2 is common to both of them but this one is missing the 3 times 3 and this one is missing the 5 so let's just multiply this by 3 times 3 which is 9 so we're just gonna get 10 times 9 is 90 and over here we were just missing the 5 so we're gonna multiply 18 times 5 which is also 90 and that's good because we're looking for something that's a common multiple right okay so how did we get this to be 90 well we had to multiply by 9 so the numerator is multiplied by 9 as well because you want to multiply by 9 over 9 you want to multiply by 1 so you're not changing anything similarly over here you have to multiply by 5 over 5 in order to multiply by 1 and end up with a 90 in the denominator so 5 times 9 is 45 1 times 5 is 5 now you have a common denominator you can just add the numerators in the previous example you're subtracting here you're adding same kind of idea right this example you're subtracting 
with the same denominator here you're adding the same denominator same process okay so 45 plus 5 is 50 50 over 90 they did this divided by 10 stuff but we can just see that this has a zero at the end this has a zero at the end so that's the same as just dividing by 10 just crossing out the zeros and you have five ninths and that's the re the reduced answer okay so here's one we have to do in our head 30 is the denominator here 21 here so what is 30 it's 6 times 5 what's 6 it's 2 times 3 so 30 is 2 times 3 times 5 as we actually just talked about earlier 21 is 3 times 7 those are both prime numbers we can't we can't uh, factor them anymore so 2 times 3 times 5 is missing the 7 that we have over here so we're gonna multiply this by 7 21 has a 3 and a 7 and this 30 is 2 times 3 times 5 so 21 is missing the 2 and it's missing the 5 right 2 times 3 times 5 is 3 times 7 so 30 is missing the 7 that's over here 21 is missing the 2 times 5 that's over here so 30 times 7 is 210 21 times 2 times 5 is the same as 21 times 10, which is 210, okay? That's our common denominator. How did we get to 210? On this side, we mul multiplied this 30 by 7. So we have to multiply 2 by 7. So we have 14 in the numerator here. Just remember that, that that's 14 over there, okay? Now on this side, to get from 21 to 210, we have to multiply it by 10. So we multiply the numerator by 10, we get 50. This was 14, this is 50, add them up, we get 64. 64 over 210. Now, is that the reduced answer? Well, you can see that 64 is divisible by 2, 210 is divisible by 2 as well. So if you just divide the numerator by 2, you get 32. 30, uh, 64 divided by 2 is 32 and you divide the denominator by 2 which is 210 divided by 2 which is 105 and that's pretty much your answer because 32 is if you factor it all out it's just a bunch of 2's 2 2 2 2 2 2 2, two and just multiply by each other it's just uh, a bunch of 2's there there's 5 of them actually 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 105, if you break it down, is the same as 21 times 5, which is 3 times 7 times 5. So the primes in the denominator do not match any of the primes in the numerator. Can't reduce it any further. Now we're going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to do adding and subtracting. Let's get rid of the uh, mixed number and get an uh, improper fraction first. 2 plus a third is two pizzas plus a third of a pizza. Each pizza ha has three pieces in it, so two pizzas have six pieces, two times three. Six plus you got another piece over here, so you have seven pieces in total, seven over three. Okay. Now, how are we going to get from seven over three, adding three over five, and subtracting one over two? We're going to have to find a multiple not only of three and five, but also of 2. How do you do that? Well, these are all prime numbers. So, we don't have to factor them. We can just see what's missing. 3 is missing the 5 and the 2. So we're going to have to multiply by 5 and multiply by 2. Okay? So 3 times 5 times 2 is what? 3 times 5 times 2 is 3 times 10, which is 30. Okay? What's the 5 missing? It's missing the 3, and it's missing the 2. So it'll be 5 times 3 times 2, which is 5 times 6, which is also 30. That's good. That's common. And what's the 2 missing? It's missing the 3, and it's missing the 5. So it's 2 times 3 times 5, which is 6 times 5, which is 30. Okay? So that's how we get these all to our least common multiple, or least common denominator of 30. As you can see here, we had to multiply by 2 times 5, which is 10. So we do the same in the numerator. Here we had to multiply by 2 times 3, which is 6. We do the same up here. 6 over 6 being 1, which is what we want. And here we had to multiply 2 by the 3 times 5, which is 15. So we do the same in the numerator. So 7 times 10 is 70. 
3 times 6 is 18. 1 times 15 is 15. Alright, so now you can just add them up. And adding a, subtracting a positive number is the same as adding a negative number. So, 70 plus 18 is 88. Okay, just remember that, 88. And then we're subtracting 15. 88 minus 15 is 73, which is a prime number. So we can't reduce this anymore. And we have 73 over 30, but the question was asked using a mixed number. So maybe the people asking the question want us to have a mixed number in the result. Um, so 73 over 30, well, if you have pizzas that have 30 slices per pizza, and you have 73 slices, well, one pizza would be 30 slices, two pizzas would be 60 slices, three pizzas would be, uh, three pizzas would be 90 slices, so you have somewhere between two and three pizzas. You definitely have two full pizzas there and some slices left over. So the two full pizzas each have 30 slices, so the, that's a total of 60. So why don't we just subtract 73 minus 60, we're left with 13, 13 slices on the, the third pizza. So we have two full pizzas and 13 thirtieths of a pizza. So that's the answer. And here's what I just mentioned, that mixed numbers are probably preferred if the question was asked using a mixed number. And when you're drawing it on the number line, it's probably easier to draw it as a mixed number, actually, because you're on the number line, you're at 0, and then 1, and then 2, and then 2 and 13 thirtieths. Probably easier to find, um, because you know it's somewhere between 2 and 3, rather than looking for 73 through the thirtieths, because in order to do that, you're basically going to have to go through these steps to figure this out anyway, right? Here's another question we have to do in our heads. Um, 5 sevenths minus... 2 and 1 seventh. Okay, so let's get this into an improper fraction. 2 and 1 seventh. 2 pizzas with 7 slices each is 14 slices, plus 1 slice here, so it's 15 slices over 7 slices per pizza. So 15 over 7, so we're subtracting 5 sevenths minus 15 sevenths. 5 minus 15 is negative 10, so you have negative 10 over 7. Okay but we want to get it that into a mixed number. So negative 10 over 7, the 10, if you take the negative sign out and just put it at the front, 10 sevenths is more than 1, right? Because 7 sevenths is 1. So take 1, one out, and one, let's say 1 pizza. Well, this is negative, so we can't talk about pizzas anymore. But we're taking 7 sevenths out and making it into 1, and we're leaving the rest of it, which was 10 minus 7, which is 3 over 7, leaving that in. So our answer is negative 1 and 3 sevenths. How many half inch thick books can be stacked to fit on a shelf that's one and a half feet high? Okay. So first of all, you have to know the difference between inches and feet, uh, which even though I live in a metric uh, oriented country, I happen to know. So there's 12 inches in a foot, okay? 12 inches in a foot. So if a foot has 12 inches, and you got a foot and a half, you got 12 and another half of 12, half of 12 is 6, you have 18 inches. And the books are each half an inch, okay? So this is basically showing you the conversion from 1.5 feet to 18 inches. I just mentioned uh, this is just uh, another way of showing it I, I don't know if this is maybe too complicated basically what they've done here is they went from a mixed number to a an improper fraction okay one and a half is the same as three halves and because here it's like a pizza with two slices per pizza you got two slices here plus a slice there three slices total over two slices per pizza and so you just multiply that by how many inches per foot you have, because this is in feet. If you multiply something in feet by inches per foot, the feet over foot cancel, and you get left with something in inches. So 3 halves times 12 over 1 
you can you can take out a two from twelve and leave six because twelve is two times six and cancel that two with this two down here and you left left with six up there so three times six is eighteen over one which is the same as eighteen how many notebooks will fit well you have to divide the total height by the thickness of each book so we're going to divide eighteen divided by a half an inch which is the same as 18 times what? The reciprocal of 1 half, right? 18 times 2 over 1 is 36 over 1, or just 36. So you can put 36 books there. Alright, summary of this section. Fractions aren't unique. There's many ways to express the same ratio. You find equivalent fractions by multiplying or dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same real number. So whatever you do to the numerator, you have to do the same thing to the denominator, whether you're multiplying or dividing. Multiplying and dividing are basically the same thing in a way. That's basically, if you're multiplying, you're basically multiplying by the whole thing by 1 over 1, or by 1, okay? So it doesn't have to be 1 over 1, it could be 2 over 2, 3 over 3, so on. Equivalent fractions in lowest terms are generally preferred. It's good practice to always reduce. That's definitely true, because we don't want things to be t too complicated. Um, and so smaller numbers are less complicated than bigger numbers. Improper fractions are generally preferred, but in real life you might have to use the mixed number equivalent, and um, you can have your answer as an improper fraction unless the, the question contain mixed numbers, or it's an answer to some sort of real world or geometry app. Uh, multiplying fractions does not require a common denominator. You just multiply what's up top and what's down below, okay? Um, and you also cancel out factors in the top with factors in the bottom, because that'll just help you reduce. And it'll make multiplying a lot simpler too, because you're multiplying smaller numbers, which is easier to do than multiplying bigger numbers. Reciprocals are rational numbers whose product equals one. So if you have a fraction A over B, its reciprocal is just B over A. Dividing fractions by multiplying the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. In other words, multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Simple enough, right? Divide fractions by multiplying the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. What does that mean? Just like we were talking about right here. Let's say, well, this is just 18. You could say 18 over 1 divided by 1 over 2, just multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. All right, so da, 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 da. rewrite any division problem as a product before canceling. Okay, that's important because we can cancel. Let's just keep things simple. Okay, that's going to be our general rule. Keep things simple. Multiplying is simpler than dividing. Okay, so get it as a product first and then cancel okay otherwise you're going to have problems adding or subtracting fractions does require a common denominator the multiplying didn't but the adding and subtracting definitely does so when the denominators of any number of fractions are the same you can simply add or subtract the numerators and result write the result over the common denominator but before adding or subtracting, you have to make sure the denominators are the same by finding equivalent fractions with a common denominator. And then you have to multiply the numerator and the denominator with the same value. And what is the appropriate value to find the equivalent fractions, which we just did in the, in the last examples there. Um, typically, it's best to convert all mixed numbers to improper fractions before beginning the process of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing again. Improper fractions, easier to deal with than a mixed number. Okay, keep things simple. Here's your practice questions. You'll have the answers to the odd ones listed, but not the answers to the even ones. You won't have answers to the discussion board topics. Does zero have a reciprocal? Well, that would have to be zero. Zero is equal to zero over any number, right? And it doesn't have to be zero over one. It could be zero over eight. So the reciprocal could be 1 over 0 or 1 over 8. It's not possible. Okay, it's undefined. What's the difference between the LCM and the GCF? That's a good one for you to think about. Uh, just go back in the notes and, and think about that. Explain the difference between an LCM and an LCD. Well, an LCD is just an LCM that goes in the denominator of a fraction. 
an LCN doesn't have to be in the denominator, an LCD does, that's what the D stands for. Why do you need to find an LCD in order to add or subtract fractions? I think you can answer that question. Explain how to determine which fraction is bigger, 7 sixths or 1 half. And what you would need to do is get these, have these, uh, um, find a common denominator, the least common denominator, uh, for uh, 16 and 2, which is actually 16, because 2 times 8 is 16. So if you're going to multiply 2 times 8, you're going to have to multiply the 1 times 8, so you're going to have 8 over 16 over here. So what's bigger, 7 over six, 7 sixteenths of a pizza, or, or 8 sixteenths of a pizza? Obviously 8 sixteenths of a pizza is. And that's the end of the section.